we try something new. Let's go. So I've recently gotten into rock climbing as an alternative exercise to strictly weightlifting and walking. And with any good exercise, we gotta get properly warmed up. Disclaimer, this is not the new thing I try today. If you wanna see that, just keep watching. I've been climbing for a few months now, so I'm not a total noob, but at the same time I am. <laughs> so I'm doing this finger warm up that almost looks like I'm doing some ninjutsu straight out of Naruto or casting some spells, shadow wizard money gang style. Don't ask me, my climbing buddy taught me this one. Then we get into doing some general arm circles to loosen up the shoulders. I'm also a bigger guy and notice that if I don't properly warm up my arms, I'll have pain in my tendons of my forearms and elbow. So I do this stretch that loosens things up, kind of looks like I'm trying to break my wrist, but I promise this one looks way worse than it is and feels really good. And honestly, way, way better than any tendonitis. Then we start our climb by scaling up the wall and seeing where our finish is. Here, if they mark a top hold, you go to that. But if they don't, you have to go to the top of the wall. So once we're ready to climb and we've got our shoes on, we can go. But first, we need some chalk. So there are multiple forms of rock climbing, top roping or traditional climbing where you scale like 50 foot walls to reach the top. But I've been primarily focused on bouldering, which is shorter routes that focus more on technique and strength and allow you to try a variety of different climbs in a single day without the marathon of scaling that 50 plus foot wall. Compared to the top roping, these bouldering walls go up to about 17 feet. So I start out the day looking for some easier and straightforward climbs that don't go all the way up and have plenty of grips to grab onto. It gives the body a chance to accustom to the strain of more intense climbs, just like doing some warm up sets for a weight training workout. So I bang a couple of those out and just pay attention to how my body is feeling before proceeding to anything more difficult. At this point, I should explain what the colors mean. Up to this point, I've been doing what this gym grades as yellow, or on the V scale, a V0 to V3. They have bouldering routes that go all the way up to V10 plus. As I mentioned earlier, I'm still pretty much a noob, and although I am pretty strong, I am also heavier and have less technique, which impedes my climbing ability. But I'm not worried about trying to be the best at climbing by any means. I think it's a very fun activity for me because it gives me purpose to my exercise and a goal to work toward. I used to be obsessed with adding another 45 pound plate to all of my lifts and getting stronger and stronger, but I ended up injuring my knee last year and have been dealing with some patellar tendonitis in the gym due to putting so much strain on my body so often. I've since shifted my mindset with exercise and muscle building to centering on functionality and mobility of my body, and climbing has been excellent for working toward that. In all honesty, it sort of feels like a grown-up playground or jungle gym, but instead of monkey bars and seeing if you can go all the way across, it's holds going up the wall. It like activates the primal urge to want to accomplish something for me. So yeah, now we're getting into the blue dots, which are rated V2 to V4, which are rated as intermediate. These I've noticed start to lean more towards strength and technique. When I first started, I could barely do any of these, but now I can do most of these with ease. I haven't studied technique very much at all and sort of just do what feels right to me in the moment. Occasionally I'll watch someone like Magnus Mitbo, who does awesome climbing content and you should check it out if you're interested in rock climbing. He makes every climb look so effortless and easy, and it just excites me to get back on the wall. It's kind of tough, dude. Woo. So those blue climbs were a little harder, and I'm pretty warmed up now, so let's try some greens. These are rated V4 to V6, and I've only been able to do a handful of these ones. They really start to test your strength and climbing knowledge with this difficulty. Let's start off with our evaluation of the holes in the wall. I'll let my past self describe this one. <laughs> Anyways, let's give it a try. That's hard. No dice. Let's try another one. Okay, so like I said, I've only been able to do a few of these greens and it's not working out for me today, but that's another part of what I've loved with climbing. There's always a new challenge and puzzle to solve, and there's always something in the comfort zone and something just barely out of reach to where it's motivating to try and get better. All right, no more voiceover. Talk to y'all later. Man, took some doves, but took a lot of fat L's right at the end. Yeah, a lot of fat L's today. No <laughs> greens. No greens for today. Well, that's how it goes, man. 
All right, just finished up the climbing workout. I'm feeling pretty freaking hungry right now. So let's go do some cooking. I gotta grab a couple more ingredients and then I'm gonna be trying to make one of my favorite stir fry noodle dishes of all time. But this is my first time trying to make it at home. So let's go and let's get cooking. So my mom always raves about these um, bun mi sandwiches that they have at the Asian supermarket. And then I always love going to the Asian supermarket because they usually just pick out a snack or something to try. So I got this frozen wafer sandwich. It's uh, strawberry flavored. So we'll give that a go after we make the meal. But I'm all sweaty from working out, so I'm gonna go change and then let's go get some ingredients prepped. And let's get cooking. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I switched clothes. I set up what we're gonna be cooking today. One of my favorite stir fry noodle dishes of all time. And that is, um, that is the Thai noodle dish. They use these super wide rice noodles that are just perfect for the tooth. And I'm not gonna be going traditional today. I'm just using what I've got on hand. Um, so I'm gonna have all the ingredients listed below, but I'll just quickly go through all of what I've got. So first thing you're gonna need is some wide cut rice noodles, uh, thick, they sell them at any of your local Asian supermarkets. You can usually get fresh or the dried. I just had the fresh one. And then got a series of vegetables. Typically, you'd only use Chinese broccoli, but I've got green onion, bean sprouts, and I'm trying out some mushrooms as well because I like mushrooms. Feel free to switch out whatever. And then as far as seasonings and aromatics, we're gonna have some garlic cloves, some MSG. You can skip that if you don't like it. A little bit of table sugar some eggs, oyster sauce, and a little bit of light soy sauce, pepper, and some cooking oil of your choice. I'm using avocado. I'm just gonna get all this stuff. Oh, forgot the most important ingredient. That's some chicken. Today I'm using chicken thighs. You can use chicken breasts, chicken tenderloins. You could even use beef, pork, tofu, fish, whatever protein. Just got chicken thighs on hand today. So we're gonna chop all this stuff up, get it cooking, and give it a taste. And this is my first time making this, so Hopefully everything turns out right. So I just mixed up all of the, the sauces and everything. So I've got a quick stir fry sauce. So when we're ready for the noodles, you can just dump it right in. All right, so we've got our garlic. Got a full bulb right here. Just gonna go ahead and put it on the cutting board. Put weight down. We're gonna use about four to six cloves. You know, I'm Filipino, I like garlic flavor. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go for six cloves. So we're gonna get our cloves of garlic out. Now we've got a pile of garlic all here all with the skin on. So you take your knife, take the flat edge, and you're just gonna give it a smack. Give each clove a smack there. Makes it easier to peel. Since we're gonna be mincing it up, you know, it doesn't have to be too pretty. And look at this, skin just flies right off. Let me get that off to the side. Peel all our garlic up. Oh yeah, this is some quality garlic right here. The garlic the aromas, incredible, amazing. <laughs> all right, now that you've got all the shells removed, from your garlic, you can go ahead and slice it up. I usually like to flatten them out a little bit more. That way it's easier to just mince right through them. And we just kind of bring them all together and just start chopping away. Make sure you tuck your fingers, curl them up so you're not chopping them off. I cut my finger the other day and uh, it was the most stupid way. Cause I, and it wasn't even while I was cooking. It was while I was doing the dishes and I look away cause someone was talking to me and I had a knife in my hand and I took the sponge and. I thought the sponge was covering the blade end, but it wasn't, and I just sliced the crap out of my fingertips. It was not good. So you don't have to go too fine with this mince. Probably just go over one or two more times so that everything's relatively the same size. Got a couple big chunks in here still, so I'm just gonna go over again. All right, awesome. So it should look something like that. Scoop it up under our knife here and into our container, and then we'll move on to chopping up the other stuff. Let's talk about what we want to do for slicing it. This leaf part, you put the stem and across. So it's almost like little bite-sized pieces. You see, so we'll go like that. Because when you cook this leaf part up, it's just gonna kind of shrivel up and, and be like a fraction of the size. So not a big deal on those. So we're gonna do that. Cue the time-lapse. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you should have something like this after processing your bok choys. And we'll get into our other veggies. Get a good portion of shroomies. Go rinse these off. 
and then we'll chop them up. Okay, so next up, some green onions, spring onions, scallions, whatever you want to call them. I got them right here. We're going to chop these up. There are a few different options, so watch closely. All right, party people. Now that we've got our ingredients prepared, I've got a wok here set over an induction burner. I know typically you cook with a flame, but this makes it easier for me to film for you guys. We're going to go in medium high heat and go in with a healthy portion of oil, probably two to three tablespoons. We've got a lot of chicken here. We want to make sure it gets cooked nicely. As far as the chicken, I just slice it up, a little bit of salt and pepper, as well as togarashi. I went a little bit light on the salt because our sauce is already pretty salty. I'm going to let this come to temp for a second, swirl it around. Then we'll go in with our garlic and the whites of our green onions. At this point, I'm going to go in with those aromatics, get those sizzling, allow the flavors to quickly bloom. As soon as you can sort of just smell it, that's all you want. You don't want this to get super browned and crispy. So probably about 10, 20 seconds. And we'll go in with our chicken. Allow that to brown and we'll put it into a fresh container. Scoop out the chicken and try to keep a good portion of that oil because that's all infused with flavor now. We want to cook our veggies in that. We're going to put that down now to a medium and we'll go in with our stir fry vegetables. Kind of just adjusting as needed. And I realize we're like halfway through cooking this dish now and it's kind of like a fusion between Chinese chow fun and you rather than just strictly one or the other because you got the bean sprouts uh, and you got the different elements of the patsu like the egg which you wouldn't usually find in a traditional beef or chicken chow pot so we're gonna see uh, how it turns out <laughs> it's smelling really wonderful right now I'm really excited to enjoy and share it with you guys then we'll throw in our noodles and the sauce and let those cook down for a couple minutes add our chicken back in crack in a few eggs and then we'll be eating put our heat up to a medium, medium high. At this point, we're going to add in our thick wide cut noodles. Allow that flavor to soak into every little bit. And you know what? I think we can go with this whole package of noodles. Who am I kidding? We got like two pounds of chicken. Break these noodles up with my spatula. So we're gonna let that go for a couple more minutes and then we'll add in everything else. Okay, now that we've got a good portion of color, we're getting into the last steps. So we're moving all of our noodles off to the side here with a touch of oil so that we can cook our eggs. So we'll crack those in. Do our best to not get any shell in there. Scramble up those eggs. Make sure we're scraping off the bottom. Don't want stuff to get too stuck in there. Eggs are like 70% of the way cooked. Let them go a tiny bit and then we'll fold them in with the noodles. Go back in with our chicken now. At this point we can add in our bean sprouts as well. For that nice texture. Bean sprouts go in right at the end because you want them to still have that crunch crispness. To not be all soggy. That is the downside of the leftovers. The, the bean sprouts do tend to get a little bit soggy. But going back down to a medium low. Just give them everything a toss and we're going to serve. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my favorite part. I'm trying out the new recipe, and I didn't forget, we've got that pork belly sandwich that my mom has been telling me is amazing. But first, let's see how we did. First try, and visually, it looks it looks pretty accurate. I'm pretty happy. So let's get a little bit of everything, a little bit of green onion, mushroom. Let's do it. Mmm. Hmm. Wow. You guys, mmm. Wow. That is really good. I think the thing I'd change, the critique I'd have for myself, is I think I did a little too much soy sauce. It is a little salty. Um, so I'd adjust that, do a little less soy sauce for the noodles, or a little bit less salt on the chicken. But that is pretty, pretty true to form there, guys. Very simplistic, basic flavors, but they just grab hold of you. You get that sweetness, the saltiness, savoriness. Oh man, that's good. We'll go for another bite. Mm. Yeah, this is just like perfect Asian comfort food. This is so good. <laughs> okay, gonna give that a break for a second. Let's unwrap this barbecue pork bun mi. Looks to be a little soggy now. It has been sitting in the fridge a little bit, but 
I won't fault them for that. Cracking it open, a meager portion of pork belly, but let's do let the flavors do the talking. We're gonna throw in a couple jalapenos. Let's go for a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Whoa. Wow. That is. I think I need to do another bite. Give me just a second here, guys. Extremely, extremely. Again, simplistic, but the flavor is just all there. Oh, <coughs> the jalapeno is a little spicy. A little bit of sweet, like that nice fluffiness of the bun mi bread. And then I don't know if that's just mayo or some sort of special sauce they do, but it's very refreshing, very fresh, clean flavors. So I really like that. So I'm gonna clean this up. Let's try the dessert. All right, guys. We got the frozen wafer sandwich, strawberry flavored. Let's give it a try. And this one, the reason why I got it today, it reminds me of my time I spent in Japan. You could go to the 100 yen store, which is basically like the dollar store. They had a dessert that's just exactly like this. Um, let's see if this matches up to what I had in Japan. Let's give it a go. Mm. Oh, there's actually a little bit of white chocolate in there too. That is, that is pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't expecting much, but that pretty much is exactly what I remember it being. You get the little nice little fluff, sort of almost crunch, but it's very soft into the tooth of this wafer shell. The strawberry ice cream is flavored well. And then that white chocolate, it was pretty flavorful. So yeah, my sister wants to do a little get together. So I'm gonna pack up that huge batch of Patsyu and then we're gonna go over there hang out for a bit and just enjoy the rest of the day, guys. Okay, so it's time to head over to my mom's house where we're going to share some of the chicken chow fun, patsyu fusion, and then my sister, my brother-in-law. Let's go. Also, just got this like weighted blanket in a couple weeks ago. So I'm gonna bring that over too and see what my sister thinks about it. So, what do we got? The cold pets you. I'm not gonna eat it cold. That's crazy. That's that's her first reaction to a whole bowl what? of noodles being hand delivered. Check I'm doing it. you a favor, really. I'm doing you a favor. No, you're not. I'm. Look at that. Gonna warm it up. To the brim. To the brim. Cold noodles to the brim. We decided to be smarter. <laughs> did you put out. mushrooms in this? I did. Damn. Oops. Why shake it? Because I wanted to get him out. What? Okay, how do I react to this? this what do you mean? How? <laughs> this is not staged. Just do whatever you're going to react to it. That's cold. Is it? That's fire, bro. Nice job. First reaction was it's cold. <laughs> it's cold? Well, that's not your fault. The flavor is good. I don't have like big words like you do. You like it? Yeah, that's fun. Success. Success. I'm doing the reaction, I don't need to speak. That's <laughs> lighted. Heck yeah. Mmm. Oh, that's a good texture. It's like flavorful. Okay, now this I believe. <laughs> this one's reaction was <laughs> it's was, it's cold. Well, it was oh. cold on the top, right? It's the top part. It's, I don't know. Made this from scratch? Yeah. I'll tell no, you. he just bought it from the store. He bought it from the <laughs> store and put it in his own bowl. Yeah, exactly. No, this is healthy. Two wins, two wins. He's gonna try out the weighted blanket. <laughs> this is actually pretty nice. It's so heavy. 
What do you think? This is nice. What's up? <laughs> All right, so we got everyone to try the noodles. Turned out good. I thought they were good. Uh, my sister tried out the waiting blanket. I'm pretty tired, so let's go home. <laughs> What a day, dude. What a day. Well, just made it home. Um, I was super tired. I'm gonna shower. That was basically a day in the life. We got to try out a bunch of new stuff. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you guys like this video. And I guess I just wanna say, it's my turn for the weighted blanket. I guess in conclusion, today's video, just like rock climbing, kinda just gotta keep giving things a try and eventually you'll get better and better, a little bit by bit. And you know, you don't need more information, you need more experience. So I'm starting to gather more experience just by filming these vlogs, trying out new stuff, trying out new recipes. So thank you guys for joining me for the journey and we will see you in the next video. I'm going to bed, peace. We're gonna be attempting to cook one of my favorite all-time stir-fried noodle dishes. This is gonna be my first attempt at it.